Okay, it's been a little while since I've made a video. I did get a strike on my channel for having a guest talk about that uh, voting thing that happened with the United States presidential election. And apparently they don't agree what really happened, so... I got a little YouTube strike, whatever, but I have been trying to see how I can fix that. But apparently, I guess once something is said on the channel, they don't let you just edit it out. They just give you a strike, which is bad. Anyways, I was like feeling a little disenfranchised from YouTube and not really wanting to do anything, but I've been doing a lot of stuff. Um, let's see, I've been helping my neighbor to offset the child support that they are trying to get him to pay back the grants that they gave to his kids, but those kids are like 31 years old now, get real. Anyways, that's been interesting. We've had a couple of letters back and forth, and the main issue is that um, you know, we looked at the Treasury Direct on his participant ID number, and we found that there's some thousands of dollars of interest there. So we took a snapshot of that and sent it along with their letter that had the remittance coupon and went ahead and tendered it with $21 postal money order paid in full for the full $163,000 in the memo using the exemption number, which is that social security number of that estate, mm -hmm. that all caps name. So we also asked questions saying, um, did some securities or bonds get made on this account? Who owns this name that's all caps? Who owns this particular estate? The state? State corporation? And if so, then you're sending us mail with that name that you own. So here it is. Back to you, Mr. Trustee or Mrs. Trustee in our case for Los Angeles County. And um, that's where it's at. We just ask the questions. Who owns this name? Who owns this account? Because he never signed up for services. Perhaps his ex-wife did, but he never agreed. If this is a unilateral contract, um, is there some type of contract that has his signature that he agreed to pay the grant back? <laughs> so he's feeling like the weight of the world is lifted off his shoulders after sending that out and being honorable to answer back and answer the questions. Uh, meanwhile, I've got a lot of these type of remittance type of things, these credit card things, and filled out these um, checks with the signature on the back. But recently, one of my friends on Instagram, Tracy, she was saying something about international bills of exchange being for Washington, D.C., and I thought, oh, I'll have to look into that. These, I believe, are basically being sent back to the trustee of the corporation, just the same way as that child support thing for my neighbor. Because that name that they put there is a doing business as name. And that's not how we spell our name. So we don't want to volunteer. We just say accepted. Here's pay to the order of bear and send it back to the trustee to deal with it. 
Uh, I've done that a few times now, and I did it with Edison too. And I've been successful so far. I haven't actually looked up the account to see what's going on with it. I just keep waiting to see if something comes back. But I did say something of, along the fact that if there is no signature, human signature, signed on the bottom according to UCC 9-406, it's not a bill. It's just a statement. So I said, I accept it. I agree. Here, pay to the order bearer. I endorse the back. Send it back to them. So um, I keep hearing in the back of my head that we should be reading. Let me let me share the screen. And I'm pulling up govinfo.gov for 328.4. This is uh, effective restrictive endorsements. I believe this is um, CFR 31, but let's just read what this says. 328.4. I'm thinking that it looks big to me, but maybe, let me see. Maybe it could go bigger. Let's see. That's pretty bad that I keep doing this and not knowing how to make it bigger. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> oh, no, that didn't work. Okay, forget it. <laughs> Go back. All right, so hopefully this is large enough for you to see. Some of you are on your phones. And it may look small, but this is 328.4. Effective restrictive endorsements. Bearer, remember, pay to the order bearer. Securities, which is what these, these appear to be securities that they can convert. Let's see. Let's see if we're all doing this right. Bear securities bearing restrictive endorsements as herein provided will thereafter be non-negotiable. Oh, that's a restrictive endorsement that makes it non-negotiable, okay? And payment, redemption, or exchange will be made only as provided in such endorsements. 328.5 says forms of endorsement. Now check this out. A, when presented by banks. I mean, I have heard that I'm an ATM at least to my kids. <laughs> I have heard that I'm a bank. So we could be operating as a bank or could they be talking about a commercial bank? Let's see. For one, for payment or exchange. Okay, well, I presented payment as a bank, I believe. The endorsement placed on a bearer security presented for payment or exchange by a bank should be in the following form. For presentation to the Federal Reserve Bank of Chase or whoever, fiscal agent of the United States for redemption or in exchange for securities of a new issue in accordance with written instructions submitted by blank insert name of presenting bank so this looks like it could be a stamp right here you know could have a stamp made and stamp that on your presentment your securities so number two for redemption at par the endorsement placed on a bare security presented for redemption at par in payment of federal estate taxes should be in the following form. So estate is your name, your all caps name. That's your estate. And the taxes, um, let's see. Here we go. For presentation to the Federal Reserve Bank of whatever, Wells Fargo or whoever, fiscal agent of the United States for redemption at par in payment 
of federal estate taxes. Oh, in accordance with written instructions submitted by me. Insert name of presenting bank. B, for conversion to book entry securities. Oh, 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 this is good. The endorsement placed on a bearer security presented for conversion to a book entry security shall be in the following form. Hey, this one sounds good. For presentation to the Federal Reserve Bank of Wells Fargo or whoever, Bank of America, fiscal agent, of the United States, oh, <laughs> for conversion to book entry securities, oh, <laughs> by me. Insert name of presenting bank. Okay, so C, when presented by service center directors or district directors, internal revenue service. The endorsement placed on a bearer security by a service center director or a district director, Internal Revenue Service. So these are those people right there. Um, a service center director or a district director or Internal Revenue Service. So let me see what this says. For presentation to the Federal Reserve Bank of whatever... Fiscal agent of the United States for redemption. Hmm. The proceeds to be credited Ooh. to the account of the service center director. Oh, Internal Revenue Service at blank for credit on the federal blank income, gifts, or other taxes due. From name and address. Hmm. Interesting. So I guess if you want to look up all these different things, you're going to go to that Title 31 CFR 328.4, 328.5. And here's another one, 328.6, Requirements for Endorsement on Bearer Securities. The endorsement must be imprinted in the left-hand portion of the face of each security with the first line thereof parallel to the left edge of the security and in such manner as to be clearly legible and in such position that it will not obscure the serial number, series designation, or other identifying data and cover the smallest possible portion of the text on the face of the security. Huh. Hmm. So if this is like a security, uh, I'm wondering if we would do on the top left, can't really do it right this, kind of like, you know, crowded right here. I wonder if we can do it right there in that space above. It says the endorsement must be imprinted in the left-hand portion of the face of each security with the first line thereof parallel to the left edge of the security. So it's, you know, properly straight across, not perpendicular and not you know, crisscross or nothing like that. And in such manner as to be clearly legible, well, imprinted, I'm wondering if you can print it with a pen because it says something about being clearly legible. Or does it have to be a stamp is what I'm wondering. And in such position that it will not obscure the serial number, a series designation, or other identifying data, and cover the smallest possible portion of the text on the face of the security. The dimensions of the endorsement should be approximately four inches in width. Hmm. I always thought it was three, but here it says four inches 
four inches in width, and then one and a half inches in height, and must be imprinted by stamp. Ah, there you go. Or plate of such character as will render the endorsement substantially er ineradicable. Oh, so this is a restrictive endorsement by having a stamp. Okay. Hmm. The name of the Federal Reserve Bank of the district must appear on the plate or stamp <clears throat> used for the imprinting of the endorsement. And present, what? So the name of the Federal Reserve Bank of the district must appear on the plate or stamp used for the imprinting of the endorsement and presentation to the appropriate branch of the Federal Reserve Bank named will be considered, oh, as presentation to the bank. Huh. Oh, well, gosh, would you have to have a stamp then for, oh, I don't know. It's got to be a Federal Reserve Bank for the district. So the name of the Federal Reserve Bank of the district. Hmm. Are they talking about like for the social security number? Maybe. Is it the one, the red number on the back of the social security number? Card? I don't know. Let's keep reading and find out. In presentation to the appropriate branch of the Federal Reserve Bank named will be considered as presentation to the bank. When securities are to be presented to the Bureau of the Fiscal Service. Huh. Oh, the words United States Treasury should be used in lieu of the words Federal Reserve Bank of New York or something. Hmm. Federal Reserve Bank of Los Angeles? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, does this have to do with a bank bank? Maybe. Fiscal agent of the United States. No subsequent endorsement will be recognized. Wow. If the form of the endorsement on a security is different than that prescribed in 328.5, the provisions of 328.7 and 328.8 shall not apply to the security. <clears throat> okay, well, we're going to have to read that, see what's going on. Now, B is on coupons. Hey, whoa. Unmatured coupons attached to restrictively endorsed securities should be canceled by imprinting the prescribed endorsement in such manner that a substantial portion of the endorsement will appear on each such coupon. Oh, okay. If any such coupons are missing, deduction of their face amount will be made in cases of redemption and in cases of exchange, remittance equal to the face amount of the missing coupons must accompany the securities. Huh. So when I look at this particular statement, um, when it says something about the missing coupons must accompany the securities. Um, does it mean this whole page or both pages? I don't know. Maybe it's this whole thing, this whole thing. Is that what it is? I don't know. Gotta find out. All right, the missing coupons must accompany the securities. Oh, all matured coupons, including coupons which will mature on or before the date of redemption, 
or exchange except as otherwise specifically provided in an announcement of, hey, um, is there a way to go to page 248? Hmm. Well, what's up with that? Hmm. Um, let me see. Command. I don't know. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, oh, so it was pretty large. Okay, so let me see. That's gonna keep going. Um, I don't see another page. T forty seven. Darn it. This must be just like a PDF. Hmm. What was that page again? 247. So we got to go to 248 to read the rest. Huh. All right. Well, I'm just going to read that much for right now. And I can make another video on the next page when I find it. <laughs> Anyways. I am just exploring and reading these things just like you are. This is my first time for that. So I'm trying to understand how to do any type of remittance coupon or what some people call securities. And I don't know it all. I wish I did. I wish I knew all the answers. But that's why we're reading, to try to gain more wisdom. So have a great night. Hey, if you guys are getting anything out of me reading these things, or if you happen to have more knowledge than I do, I would love it if you would put some good comments below. I appreciate that, the support. And also find me on uh, Telegram, Haya Shalom, and Facebook, Messenger. I have a couple of groups where we just kind of come together and try to help one another to understand all these things. Okay, have a great night. Please like.